All right, so I just want to go over the notation that's at the beginning here and then a couple other little things. So um, anyway, these are different examples of partition matrices. And so, you know, you draw a line or dotted lines here. Um, you insert, you know, little rules in there and to break them up. All right, so for example, down below, here's uh, three different possible partitions of a three by four matrix, right? So this is a three by four matrix, and these are just different ways maybe it's partitioned. So like, you know, rows and columns, you've seen that before, and you've seen that kind of notation before. Um, maybe though it's broken up here. So then you have a whole new matrix. You have a matrix in the first row and first column of your partition matrix. You have a matrix in the first row, second column, and so forth. And so if you know that your your matrix is partitioned, basically these names then mean to find that area, that, that matrix. So if somebody gives you a matrix and they say this is A and then you see that it's partitioned, if somebody asks you for A13, that means first row, third column. So that is the matrix 6, 4. And then that by itself is, you know, like a 2 by 1 matrix, right? Okay, what are the dimensions of A22? Two, two? So second row, second column. So A22 two, two is um, the matrix 3, 1. And so you would say, oh, well, the, the dimensions of that thing are a um, one row, two columns. So this is a one by two matrix. Okay, so just noting that this is like a little bit different than you've seen before. Okay, so when you have partition matrices, if you are going to multiply by a scalar, well, then all the numbers in the matrix get multiplied by that scalar, right? So if you're going to do like, you know, 5 times A, well, multiply everything by 5, and that's it. Now, if you are going to add them, they have to be lined up well, like, um, or the sizes have to work. So, like, for instance, you could not add this matrix and that matrix. Even though there's 12 entries in each one, they're not, like, appropriately sized. Like, if you're going to add this matrix with a matrix down here, it has to be, like, the same size, and so that everything has to line up. So if you're going to add two matrices, like this is a, a two by three, there has to be another two by three matrix down here to put with it, okay? So you can't add them unless they're all like arranged the same way. So if you wanted to add a matrix here, like you'd have to have this matrix plus another one that is also broken up in the same way, okay? All right, now multiplying matrices, we did that in class, and so I'm gonna show you um, that example in the back at the on the back at the end. And so when they say um, A and B are partitions are conformable for block multiplication. So that just means that everything is sized appropriately and um, everything's going okay. So I'll show you how to do this matrix multiplication again at the end of the video in case like you needed that again. But I wanted to show you some extra little examples just for a couple minutes. Um, and we'll do these a uh, couple of these like for a warm up next time. So I'll make you do it that way. So in these couple examples here, you don't have to write this down because I think it's, you know, it's going to be kind of like, like obvious. It's not like that big a deal. But, um, you know, let's look at these couple examples. So these two matrices, they're supposed to represent, um, uh, what's it called, partition matrices, right? So it doesn't matter what size E is or, or zero, this is zero matrix, or A is or B is, but let, let yourself know that they are partitioned conformably, so it works, okay? And also you see you have a two by two times a two by two, all right? So anyway, these are partition matrices, and um, I guess you could say the partitions are, are like, you know, right in the middle here, but don't worry about that. All right, so if I'm gonna do this, anytime you see zero, that's a zero matrix. When you see the letter I, that's your identity. All right, so let's take a look at what's happening here. So basically I would be saying, I'd be having my answer over here. I would say, oh, um, E zero and AC, that would be E times A and zero times C. So in this first right spot right here, I'd have E times A plus zero times C. Well, um, zero times C, zero times a matrix, if you multiply a matrix by a matrix of all zeros, that's gonna basically go away to zero. So I have E A right here, all right? So I have E zero times B and D. So in that spot right there, I've run out of space, but I have E B plus zero times D. So basically zero, right? So this would be E B back here. 
and then 0f times ac. So 0a would go away, but I'd have fc. And then 0f times bd, I'd basically be left with fd. All right, so that's just to get you used to something we're we'll do down here. All right, so in this next one, so 2 by 2, 2 by 2, I think I'll make it a little bigger this time. So I0 times AC. So I0, I would go with A, and 0 would go with C. So I times A plus 0 times C. Well, that's gone. Now I times A, that's the identity matrix, times A. So that's just going to get you A back. Right, and then I0 times BD. So you have I times B plus 0 times D. So that's gone. Well, I times B is just B. Okay. Um, negative XI times AC. So I'd get negative XA plus I times C. Well, so I can't really tell anything about that. I know that I times C is just C. So I just say negative XA plus C. And then negative X. I and BD. So negative XB plus I times D is just D. So negative XB plus D. So that's basically all I would know. All right. Um, so that leads us to these last two here. So same thing, but this time you're telling me what it's equal to. So I know that when I multiply these together, I have X0 times AB. So we're going to do the same thing we did above, but now I also know what it's equal to. So X and A plus 0 times B, so that's just XA, all right, X0, 0, C, so that one's just 0, YZ, AB, so that's YA, plus ZB, all right, leave that one, and I got YZ and 0, C, so Y and 0 is 0, and I got ZC, all right, so now, since I multiply those together, I know that they're equal to the identity matrix, 0, 0, and the identity matrix, all right, so you see these ones match got that. So what I, what I'm trying to see what I can tell you about A, B, and C, you know, find formulas for X, Y, and Z in terms of A, B, and C. So look, X, A is equal to I. So let's write that down. X, A is equal to I. So I know I'm trying to find a formula for X. So I know that um, basically X and A are inverses of each other, right? So I would know that um, X is the inverse of A because they multiply to the identity matrix. Okay, so there's my first equation. All right, well, let's do this one. This is a little bit easy, right? So same thing. ZC is equal to the identity matrix. So I now have a formula for Z. Z is just the inverse of C. Okay, all right, so there's that one. And then let's use this guy right here. YA plus ZB equals zero. All right, so from that, um, I can basically say that um, I could bring these over. I could say that YA is equal to negative Z times B, just moving that over. Now, let's see, is there anything else I know up above for Z? Um, I'm trying to solve, I need an equation for Y because I already have X and Z. So my equation for Y, I'd want to multiply um, the sky over here by the inverse of A and multiply the sky by the inverse of A. So Y is equal to, I'll put that negative sign um, out front, I got inverse of A times Z and times B. Now remember Z was the inverse of C, wasn't it? <laughs> so I got negative A negative 1, this was C negative 1 times B. All right, so that would be my equation for y. That would be like kind of the grossest one there, but that would be it. All right, so we're just trying to come up with like a little equation there. And so we'll um, do this one in class next time. But again, it's just like figuring out this times that equals this thing right here. So like I would have a b a x plus b times zero is zero equals the identity matrix. So that's gone. So if A times X is the identity matrix, well, that, that must mean that X is the inverse of A, because if you multiply this identity matrix, you're inverses of each other. Okay, so little things like that. All right, so I'm going to go back. Um, if you were in class, you do not, you can stop the video and just go do, remember you're doing this problem for homework, right? Um, and I'm going to go and do this one real quick so that um, if you didn't understand it or you weren't here, then that's what you got. All right, so. 
these matrices are, these are separate matrices, right? So I'm, I am multiplying this matrix is two by two. So this is a two by two, and this is a two by one. So this right here is a two by one in the big picture sense. So these is gonna produce a two by one. So I'm gonna draw a big thing here. I'm gonna have two things across and one column. So I'm gonna have it broken up like that. All right, so now, when we do this, I'm gonna multiply these matrices by those matrices. Then I'm gonna multiply these matrices by these matrices, okay? So we're gonna number them, or letter them, A, B, C, and D, and then this will be E and F. So I'll be multiplying A, B times E, F, and then adding them together. So what's gonna be in the top spot over here is A, B times E, F. So A times E plus B times F. A times E plus B times F. Yeah. All right. And then I'm out of, I don't have any more, so I'm going to go down to the second row. Second row, first column. So right down here, I have C, D, and E, F. So C, E plus D, F. And so this is how your partition is going to go. And so basically what you want to do is over on the side, find these things. So A, E. Well, A, E, let's see. That's A times this. This is a two by three times a three by two. So I know it's gonna be a two by two. So let's do it. One, two, three, multiplying by negative one, three, zero. So it's gonna be negative one, six, and nothing. So five. Then I got one, two, three times negative two, four, six. This gonna be negative two, eight, and 18. So six and 18 is 24. All right, then I'm gonna got two, four, one times negative one, three, zero. So negative two, and 12, that's 10. And 2, 4, 1 times negative 2, 4, 6. So negative 4, 16. So that's 12 <clears throat> plus 6, so 18. Now I want to find BF. Now remember, they have to be the same size. Because look, B and F, 2 by 2, 2 by 2. So hey, guess what? It's 2 by 2. Because i got to add these together for my answer. All right, so negative 1, 0 and 1, 2 gets me negative 1. Negative one, zero times zero, three gets me zero. Negative two, three times here gets me negative two and six. And negative two, three times here gets me negative nine. All right, so add these together. So I get um, four, 24, uh, 14, and nine. So there's my answer up here. Four, 24, 14, and nine. Okay, so now I have to do CE plus DF. So CE, let's take a look at that. So C is a one by three, E is a three by two. So my answer is a one by two. So one row and two columns, so just two spots. So zero, five, two times negative one, three, zero. So zero, 15, zero. And then I got zero, five, two times here. So zero, 20, and 12, so 32. All right, and then I got DF, so here times here. So one zero times one two is one. One zero times zero negative three is zero. So I have to add these. So I get 16 and 32, so that's down here. Okay, so in case you need a refresher on that. All right, I'll see you in class, bye-bye.